as introduction, I'd simply like to make this statement. A wise man embraces the season God has supplied. He never curses the season. Seasons are not something we control. They're something God controls, obviously. We know as the earth revolves around the sun, it affects its season. But those we don't control, but we can take advantage of the season and the opportunity it creates. And a wise man does. And a foolish man could curse the heat of summer, but a wise man's already got his crops in and the heat's bringing those fruit to a place of ripe so that he can harvest them. That's wisdom. So a wise man plants in early spring, harvest in summer, purges in the fall, and prepares for the next year in winter as the roots grow in the tree. He doesn't try to harvest in winter or purge in the spring. He accepts the atmosphere God has provided and takes advantage of the opportunity it provides. So I look at this moment and say, wait a minute, this is an opportunity that we don't always have. Why curse it? Why be in a hurry to get out of it? Maybe there's a maybe this is a part of the plan of God and there's things that we must accomplish. And so take a focus on, focus on the opportunity that creates. We know that atmosphere predetermines what lives and dies. So a certain atmosphere shift in the winter causes things to die that lived and thrived in the spring. When the spring comes, things that have been dormant come back to life. Atmosphere controls many things. And what's happening right now is created an atmosphere that's given opportunity for things to grow that couldn't grow, and it's causing things to die that needed to die. Yeah. It's a divine shift in a moment. Let's don't curse it. Let's take advantage of it. This yeah. season shifts, always changes atmosphere. So a season shifts, so does atmosphere, and so does what lives and dies. So I thought about, I thought about Joshua and Joshua 5.12, when they go into the land of promise, it said this, the manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but that year they ate produce from Canaan. What was the shift? Well, when they moved across the river, what God had been doing, what his part of the process was, changed. He no longer sent manna. He changed his function, therefore they had to change their function in order to live in the new land. We Amen. see that as a powerful thing. Yes. God's been doing something. He yep. shifted. We'll look at that. And he's going to shift again. The season changed. The goal was never to get the children of Israel to the wilderness. It was always to get them to the promised land. But the purpose of the wilderness was to wash Egypt out of the Israelite and teach them the ways of God. I believe we see some, we see some similarity in this COVID-19 circumstance we've been living through. Manna in that wilderness, which had stopped, but while it was in the wilderness, was a part of that teaching. It was not just provision that, so they would have something to eat. The manna was from heaven, but it stopped when they transitioned from the wilderness to the promised land. God's requirements of the nation during the time of manna was that every day, except Sabbath, they would go out and gather in the morning what they would need for the day. On Sabbath, however, God required them to live on the leftovers from Friday. Why did he do that? He did that so that they would not believe that every day God was going to do the same thing, but they would remember he is the provider, and he could cause the leftovers from the rest of the week to last on one day. On any other day, obviously, it would get worms and go bad. We see that God simply showing them, I'm still God. Amen. The system never becomes God. The Amen. process never becomes God. Yes. I'm the provider. Yes. I'm God. I'm going to make a way. It's always all about me. Yes. And what can happen with us as a church is we begin to believe the way we do church, the systems we've learned, the things we've read, the way we imitate others. We do this on Sunday. We follow up this way. We have this process, and we're going to see success. COVID-19 has taken away that process. We can't do it that way. We can't be that anymore. It's, it's not the same. It's been a Sabbath in a sense. God said, what got you here? This, it doesn't work in this. You've got to shift. It's so important Amen. that we understand that on Sabbath day, no gathering was allowed. On Sabbath day, they had to wait on the Lord. They lived on the leftovers from the day before, and that's where we are. We're seeing God make our leftovers enough to move forward. We're seeing God do some other miracles for us. He's reminding us that he's our provider, not our offering bucket, not our process, none of that. If there's this real spiritual dynamic that we're in the middle Amen. of, and we've got to embrace that before we look at going back. 
Why are we here? What is God trying to do? God reminded them that he could provide with or without the systems that they were used to or comfortable with. And he's teaching us that. This, this uh, for us, this COVID-19 experience should be a Sabbath of sorts also, because with it came the spiritual shift from our dependable methods, just like it did from theirs. For instance, the government sent us money. We've never had that before. And for those that had the faith to go out and gather it, it was there from the Lord. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. We also see the internet becoming our offering bag. We, we've always had, we've had that available, but not like it has been. And God's daily supernatural supply, according to his ability, not according to our ability, has continued and still is. I talked to three church planners, three church pastors this week, um, this weekend, over the weekend. And I asked them how they were doing financially. I, I, the three that I spoke to all said unbelievably well, unexpectedly well. What we thought was going to become very difficult, we just keep finding a way. There just keeps being enough. And then and two of them said, the money we got from the government, we haven't even need it, but we have to show that we spent it for the sake of not paying it back. But the truth is, we've actually not needed it. We're going to end this with that much left in our reserve. It's been a dynamic shift. Everybody may not have that, but, I, but that's okay. God is supplying all of our needs according to his riches and glory. He is paying for his church and proving to us that he's our supplier, not our system. We have to understand the blessing of the tithe a little bit. And when we grasp that, we grasp what God is doing better. It all comes, I tell you what it helped me was it was a Wednesday night. I, I just taught three Sundays in a row on the importance of the tithe, and the spiritual principles, the biblical principles. And many people had challenged them to get involved. Many of our people had. And it, many of them already were, but new ones had jumped on board with the tithing principle. So now it was a Wednesday night. And on Wednesday nights, we would allow testimonies. The first person to testify that night jumped up to say, Pastor, thank you for teaching us about tithing. I really didn't get it. I really didn't understand the step of faith. I didn't grasp the principle. But a month ago, when you first preached the sermon, my wife and I sat in the car and said, we're going to take the, pa the challenge. And as Pastor said, for one month, we're going to be faithful with our tithes and see what God will do. He said, Pastor, you need to know this, that the second week of tithing, I was called into the boss's office and given a promotion. One that I should have had a long time ago, but they never noticed me. All of a sudden, the spotlight was on me. Two weeks later, because I did so well in two weeks in the new job, the, the guy that had been over me was released, and I now have been promoted twice in one month, Hallelujah. and my salary has doubled in a 30-day period. Well, the whole Jesus. church is celebrating. Wow. People that hadn't been tithers were going, maybe I will do this. <laughs> I mean, it was, a, it was a moment for us. And then another person got up. They tell the story of how they started tithing. They went out and opened the mailbox. There was a check from someone who had passed away, and they had received an inheritance. And the person they received it from, they didn't even really know. But yet God worked it out. They got a check, and it was a substantial check. And they were celebrating, paying off all their bills. They'd only been tithing a month, and look what God had already done. But while they were doing that, I was looking around the room at other people that I knew did not yet have that testimony. For them, that was not their experience. And I thought, God, they're, being, they're discouraged by how you're blessing these so graphically while they are personally not walking in that same blessing. What's happening? And the Lord spoke to me so that I could give direction to those that night. Here's what he said. He said, for some people, more money would not be a blessing because their heart has not been trained yet. And money would give them freedom to do things that would be a problem, literally lead them into a curse. As soon as they're mature enough, I will release that same kind of blessing in them. But my promise was blessing. And what I'm doing for them is a blessing because I'm teaching them and training them. I'm keeping good record. I will give them above Amen. and beyond. As they grow in maturity, they will receive more of the abundance. So even in this, some of our churches are at one place in their development, and God can just send them money, and it's good. But God is doing more than just filling their checkbook. He is preparing them for the future. Yes. He is doing something. Something is happening yes. in the midst of this moment, and we yes. can't ignore it. In the wilderness, God provided manna to eat while purging the, 
purging the nation from the Egyptians gods and the Egyptian mindset and transitioning yes. them from the slave thinking to a warrior thinking. Oh, this was a great transition that had to take place. And I look at us and I think God is not trying to just get us through COVID and back to where we were. No, this process is at work in us to change us, to get Egypt out of us, to get us out of just being uh, the mind of a slave to the mind of a warrior. The yes. thinking has to shift. This, there's something deep going on in the midst of this while God is holding us back not allowing us to do it the way we've done it. And I don't want to say that the church method is an Egyptian method, but we've got to admit, we've learned the ways of the world and how to bring the ways of the world into the church to be effective based on those principles, sometimes while even violating the biblical principles that he's given us. And God is saying, I'm ready to do something in America, Amen. but I've got to shift the way they yes. think and operate. And so he puts us into quarantine. He puts us into a Sabbath and he's showing us, no, I'm bigger than that. Oh, is there so much? I, I wish you were all in the room so you can amen. 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 Before, before we hurry to the next phase, we need to be sure this is what God is doing for us, that, this, that it's time for us to make that move and make that change. So important that, there's, that we know that rather than hurry up to that, is there going to be unfinished business? What God's trying to do now that hasn't completely been accomplished is there some things and shifts in our life and our ministry that he really needs to finish, and we want those completed before we move on. If there's any false gods left, I promise you they'll worship them when we get back into the promised land. If they haven't all been destroyed and gotten rid of, if there's anyone who's not completely dependent on God before we go forward, they will steal from Jericho, and they'll bring a curse on all of us, as Achan did. There's some things happening in this wilderness that need to happen. There's some yes. shifts in us that Hallelujah. God's trying to say, I'm not going to yes. let you do church the traditional yes. way. You've got to learn the things I'm teaching. Anyone who won't accept the new ways of the new land when we move in, if they won't accept, if they still think there's going to be manna and there's not going to be, they're going to starve in the new land. They've got to learn this transition God is leading us through. It's a shift. So we have to have our dependence on God, not on the Amen. things that are we have on the source, not the resource, as yes. someone said. We've got to see this shift. It's a new season. And when we go forward, this new season is new, but the God of last season is still the God of this season. Hallelujah. This is not a return to Egypt. See, too many times we're looking for God. Well, the children of Israel were trying to find a way back to Egypt. What God was saying to them was, you're never going to go to Egypt again. You don't need to know the ways of Egypt. I'm moving you through the wilderness into a land of promise that's going to be different. God's not going to take us back to doing church the way we did church. He's nope. going to take us to a whole new yes. way of Amen. being church that we've never been church yes. before. Amen. And this COVID process is the change that must happen in us before we step into that. It's not a return to the season we left, but a return to the season that's next. Amen. It's a new season. Amen. Once they crossed the river and ate the produce of the promised land, the man and the old requirements all went away with it and were replaced with sowing and reaping. They didn't just go out and gather anymore. They now had to plant a seed. They had to wait on the rain. They had to learn the importance of the rain. Their gathering skills were replaced with planting and harvesting skills. Yes. It was a whole shift. And what we were doing before before COVID, can you get what I'm saying? Yes. That, that God is up to something. This Amen. is a shift. It's a, it's a worldwide spiritual shift of what God was doing before it and what God's going to do after it. And if we're still living in what God was doing before, we're going to starve to death. Those things aren't going to work like they were. God is taking us to a new place, and we've got to know how to operate in that new place. Amen. Got to get this. I, um, I thought about Deuteronomy 11.10. He said this, the land you are entering to take over is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where you planted your seed and irrigated it by foot, as in a vegetable garden. 
but the land you are crossing the Jordan to take possession of is a land of mountains and valleys that wow. drinks rain from heaven. Hallelujah. He said in Egypt, you had the Nile River and you had this irrigation process and you kicked the board over to catch the water and it would flood your garden and you kicked it back and you controlled when you got water and when you did, that's over. He said, in the land you're going to, you're only going to get water when I send water. Oh, and you're yeah. going to have to be in rhythm with what I'm doing. My rain will come. I will determine when it will rain and when it will pour. And God is moving us to a place to know how to work in rhythm with something oh. he's about to do. Oh. An outpouring yeah. he's about to release. Man. Wow. When they, Hallelujah. They, on, we don't have the oh. Nile anymore. We, that's in the past. It seems to me seems to me we've been able to get our flow from what's happening upstream from others and other churches. We've read all their books and we do what they do and we get online and download their sermons and we get online and bring in their pretty stuff and we put on and we've been doing church and we have literally become a church doing land out of what is flowing from Egypt. And I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's all bad. God's used it. Thank God he's used it. But what he's saying to us is that's not where we are anymore. We're shifting to a new way of doing church. And this COVID moment is the transition from one way to the next way. And it's going to be the rain from heaven. And we've got to learn how to live and receive the rain from heaven again in a new way. Amen. It will Hallelujah. no longer be the flow from the upstream. The thing that we were to, to learn in the wilderness and by the manna, and that they were to learn by the manna, was that their provider on both sides of the river was the same. The God that provided for us before is the same God that's going to provide for us now. But the way he did it in the wilderness with just manna together, that's not going to happen anymore. From the time they went in, it was over. We're going to have frustrated pastors who only know how to do ministry the old way. And they're going to be disappointed that when they tried, it no longer works. It was good before, but it's not enough anymore. It's not happening. It's not going to work. They've been able to draw big crowds with it, but it's not going to happen. Something shifting in the dynamic of heaven. Have we learned that our God on this side is the same God, but what he's going to do over here is not what he did over here. Amen. Therefore, what we do has to change. We have to learn sowing and reaping instead of just gathering what is falling. Yes. The celebration the Sabbath was also, I don't know how long I'm supposed to go, but I'm going to keep going. You stop me. <laughs> you're, good, you're, good. The you're doing well. You're good. Right. You're good. The celebration of Sabbath was a part of that lesson. So what, let's look at Sabbath because I think we're in a divine Sabbath, a gift of Sabbath. Sabbath shortened allowed travel. How do you like that? That fits us. Yeah. They were not allowed to go as far on the Sabbath day as they were on other day. It limited where they could go. It sure affected us in this office. They yeah. shortened their allowed. Number two, it required them to stay home with family. We've seen that, this, this, this shelter in place. It required wow. them to wow. stay home with family. Wow. It gave them opportunity for personal worship in a private prayer closet that they didn't have the rest of the week. While God promised he would stand guard over them. If you look at the, at the celebrations where all the men, three times a year, all the men would have to present them. And God's promise to them was when the men go and they leave their place together and worship before me three times a year, I will stand guard over your property and I will bless it while you're gone. I think Amen. God is saying to us, look at this. I've put you in quarantine, but I've blessed the church, and I've taken care of yes. it. I've stood guard over it yes. while you've been doing this, and I'm trying to teach you the importance of those same principles, that we grasp it. He said this in Matthew 16 and 8, Jesus, aware of their discussion, Jesus asked, you have little faith. Why are you talking among yourselves about having no bread? Do you still not understand? Don't you remember the five loaves and the 5,000 and how many baskets you gathered? Or the seven loaves and the 4,000 and how many basketfuls you gathered? He's saying to them, haven't you learned it yet? I'm going to supply for my church. I'm Amen. there. Don't you have the I faith to believe me and trust me? This is not about how skilled you are, how good of an offering taken you are. It's not about how well you're able to plan the future and how well you know how to snuggle up to the right giver and all these principles you've learned. Those were Egyptian principles. I want you to come into a whole new way of me being the provider. This is a shift. 
Hebrews 3, 18 said, and to whom did God swear that, yes. that they would never enter the rest if it was not to those who disobeyed so that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. God is saying, I'm trying to teach you in the wilderness so you can walk into the promised land, believing in me that when the rain needs to come, it will come. And when the, if you plant the seed, I'll do my part. See, we have learned that God in this moment We've been reminded, as the Sabbath always teaches us, God is our source, not any other structure. And we have learned that there is rest available to those who can trust God to take care of it. That we don't have to kill ourselves, wear ourselves out, or defeat ourselves based on those things. He also has taught us that family matters to him. Yes. Some years ago, we did a study in North Texas. And the question that I had them answer was this. If in the last three generations, every Christian family had raised their kids to be Christians, and those kids had raised their kids, where would we be in America? When we got through with the numbers, we discovered that over 70% of all America would still be Christians if we had simply won our own children to Jesus. Amen. The focus of my prayer is that this COVID experience bringing the family together and requiring us to do ministry in our own house, requiring dad to be the, the priest of his own house, literally is going to, in the, in the next generation, see a result of yes. more people coming out of our homes as Christian percentage-wise than we've seen in generations. I'm believing for that. And God is saying to us in this moment, your family matters. Raising yes. your kids is your priority. Yes. Go back home. And we also have learned this that the prayer closet matters more than the pulpit. Amen. That what we do in the prayer closet is more, but we haven't been able to get in a pulpit in a long time. We've had to preach from our own living rooms. We've had, but what is happening in our prayer closet, it has given us more time for prayer, more focus on prayer, more of the importance of prayer, and God is pushing us back in this moment. The ways of Egypt is so attached to that whole generation, that generation had to die in the wilderness. God doesn't want us to die. He's not made this a 40-year process. It'll be over in a few months. Yes. But the process and what it needs to produce needs to be effective. Being in a hurry to get out of this before it's gotten Egypt out of us is not the goal. There must be this moment of understanding and grasping that this is not a government-induced thing. This is not even a disease-induced thing. This is a gift from our God with a purpose attached yes. to it that must be fulfilled. We must learn and we must be ready for a different way of doing ministry on the other side because the man is going to stop in the wilderness. God's going to show his reign on the other side. What have we learned in the wilderness? Whatever it is, must be taken with us. And I hope we have learned that God alone is our source and he's all we need. Number two, that rest is a requirement, not an option and we're not too important to participate in. Number three, family matters as, mm. as much as the church. Number four, our prayer is more important than yes. our preaching. Amen. I did notice this. I did notice this, that the worship that was learned in the wilderness, the, temp, the tabernacle, was carried forward with them into the promised land. It was all they took with them was the worship they had learned in the wilderness. And there's some things about our worship at home. There's some things about our private worship. There's some things our families are learning yes. about how to do it on their own. They're being strengthened. Yes. Some of those things should be carried with us, but some of the other things will not. The expectations and opportunities change with the seasons. And this new season will be different. The buildings and the laying on of hands of our parents' generation and some of their other systems, we, we will see those return to us. But we will never irrigate again from the river of others. But we're going to find out how to walk in the rain that God has provided. And I believe with all my heart there's an outpouring of the Spirit of God in our near future. And what God's trying to do right now is get us ready for what he's about to do in the near future. And this is a moment of preparation. 
and we need to know that our buildings and monuments aren't as important as those we mentor and that our doctorates are not as important as our descendants. There is some divine shift happening in us. This is that moment. So it's not how we go back. I don't even think it's really when we go back. I think it's who we become before we go back. Hallelujah. That matters the most in this moment. Amen. I believe our going back is not back. It's forward. Amen. I believe we're moving on. And making sure we're really going forward and not back to Egypt, but into the promise, not back to the past is the job of leaders and you and I are those leaders and if we'll let God stir our heart for what he's doing not just what the community wants to do what the church wants to do what our fears want us to do what is God doing so that his will and his purpose can be accomplished and when we go over and the manna stops we're going to eat the fruit of the land Hallelujah. And the goal was always to eat the fruit of the land. It was never to live on manna forever. Let us bless what God's doing. And I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak more on the spiritual side than Amen. on the practical. But if you want to talk practical, there are some practical things that we shared the other day that are already there that we can discuss again. I know I've preached kind of planned on it it's because I love you and I believe you're a key to what God's about to do in this nation I believe that with all my heart and I'm so grateful for the leadership you have here and for your willingness to be who you are and obey God God bless you guys Dennis well wow what a powerful word folks that 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 was that was a word from God a word of wisdom to us um, and I think it's a word of confirmation. Amen. So aligned. It's a word of confirmation. With what I think, you know, that, yeah. um, you know, Brother Choco has, uh, was just in a, a gathering with us where he preached or spoke about God sending us to our room. And uh, this morning we talked about also being going to a room called the soul room. Now we're hearing that God's, God kept us at home for that very reason. I just feel like I just feel like I think all of us know that we know this is more of a divine moment than we would ever say this is a terrible demonic moment. God is in this and in the middle of this, and uh, so I think, uh, uh, brother, that's an encouraging word. And I think that maybe there are some comments or questions to brother Rick. Uh, some of you might have something you'd like to say, maybe a confirmation of what you just heard. Uh, just, just raise your hand and then. Uh, uh, feel free to speak or, or even a question for, for for pastor rick at this time amen we heard also the principle i think the holy spirit has interwoven no no one here practiced or knew what the other was going to say it's true but the holy spirit certainly uh knew and uh reminding us that we are building the church on his principle and on his word not on programs not on amen. things of the past so thank you for that word that was powerful thank i mean you. I amended the whole time. I was, I was preaching with you, Pastor. I appreciate it. I need the help. <laughs> Any questions? I, I think we see some questions. Kathy, no, we're good? All right. Amen. Good. Well, Pastor Rick, thank you. Thank uh, you. Hey, folks. Thank you, Pastor Rick. A, a word of appreciation. 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 You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so kind. God bless you guys. That was so right. timely, Pastor. Honored. Oh, my goodness. That was fresh manna for sure. Looks like uh, 